is the big moment. You know, if you're keeping score at home, we're just about four minutes away from the main event totality. And if I swipe back to the screen here, we've been tracking this view for the past couple minutes here in Orzazat, Morocco. They have a beautiful clear night there in the desert right now. You can see just the last little sliver of brightness here before the moon is eclipsed here for us. And we're starting to get some really interesting reddish color creeping across. And just before we went on, you're telling me something interesting about the times that we were displaying there. There's, you know, they're not down to the exact second. You know, we have them at like 11.29. Why is the, that, you know, not precise for us? Right. You would think that we know the geometry of the shadow and we can just figure that out. But it turns out that the width of the shadow at the moon um, is affected by the atmosphere. And, of course, the atmosphere on Earth is constantly changing. Um, it enlarges the shadow by about 1% to 2%. But for each eclipse, it's a little bit different. Uh, so when we do the calculations, we use an average value, but um, we don't know precisely what that number is going to be until it actually happens. And this is actually something that um, citizen scientists can help with. Um, while the uh, shadow is moving across, you can time when that edge hits each crater, and you can do that um, at the end of totality as well. Um, and this sort of pins down the size of that shadow. Um, and uh, so, I, I mean, I think it's probably surprising to people that we were not certain to the millisecond when yeah, these things are exactly. going to happen. But, you know, uh, science is a little bit messy sometimes. And, and we don't even fully understand all of the effects that are changing the size of that shadow. So it's, a, it's an ongoing question. Yeah, and we've been watching them kind of adjusting the exposure a bit of the camera here to get this really dark area of the moon. And a couple of our other feeds as well have been kind of doing the same pattern as well here, too. Can you tell us a little bit about this red color we're seeing starting to come up here? If I'm understanding correctly, it's a, a projection of all the sunrises and sunsets? It absolutely is. Yeah. Um, imagine how beautiful that would be I mean, to be incredible. on the moon and see it. Yeah, um, yeah this is a, a color that's coming from all the sunrises and sunsets. It's the, it's the light filtered through the atmosphere. Um, all the blue light is scattered away. The red light is sort of refracted into that total shadow. Um, and so that's why it's appearing red. It's very possible that the color of this eclipse is somewhat darker than usual because of an eruption in Tonga in right. December and January. Um, the number of aerosols, uh, particles in the atmosphere, uh, can affect the darkness. And so there's a scale um, that we rate the darkness. Uh, the scale goes from 0 to 4. The scale was invented by an astronomer named uh, Dangean. Right. Um, and so that's another thing that people can do. They can go outside and sort of judge the darkness of this compared to other eclipses. And this one's looking a little dark. Yeah. If you're a bit luckier than us at home and you don't have cloud cover, what, what kind of things can you see with the naked eye just looking up at the moon at this point? Right. I, you know, I, I think even with the naked eye, you can distinguish the dark parts of the moon from the brighter parts. Um, the dark parts are called mare, and these are places where lava has infilled large depressions. Uh, so this is um, tranquility where Apollo 11 landed and Serenity is next to it. Um, and uh, Imbrium is up here. Um, these are basalts. These are like volcanic rocks, and they're very dark. You think of uh, uh, black beaches in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, so you have a geology background. You know about this. Um, and then the, the lighter parts are called highlands. And these are older. Um, they're more heavily cratered, um, but they're not filled with lava. Uh, and so that's something you can notice right away just with the naked eye. And looking at my watch right now, it is 1129 here on the East Coast. This is the moment we've all been waiting for totality here there's just that last little bit of sliver of light here so we're just going to sit back and watch this moment happen yeah. wish, we, wish we could be doing this from outside here in the rocket oh, like goddard would be really nice but you know this is still an incredible view here from orzazad well and one of the things that you'll notice i mean this bright part is just because of the difference in exposure so yeah. this part of the moon right here is closer to the center of the shadow and that's where it's darker so throughout totality you're going to see this sort of gradient from one side to the other and so if you're at home, you know, this is the moment to run outside. Keep us in your back pocket, listening on your headphones as you run out there to take some pictures for some play-by-play. -play. But what are some tips for this moment? You kind of went over some earlier here, but, you know, this is the moment to take a picture and share it with us wherever you're watching this. Right. Well, and the lovely thing about a, a total lunar eclipse is that it lasts for a little while. So yeah. this is an opportunity just to get outside. Um, it's an outdoor activity. You bring a lawn chair and you kind of sit back and you think about the fact that we're in the Earth's shadow every night. Um, but this night you are sharing that shadow with a body that's a quarter of a million miles away it's the same shadow which is kind of cool and i can't help but think about what that view would look like on the moon you know imagine if you're an astronaut up there observing that i i yeah i would love that i, I think it was mentioned a little earlier um uh, a question came in about um, whether or not apollo or, or any astronaut had seen 
uh, a total solar a total lunar eclipse right. from the moon almost um a plan for one of the Apollo missions was to leave the TV camera pointed uh, at the Earth, and uh, an eclipse was going to take place a few days later, but the camera malfunctioned, and, oh, and no. we didn't have that opportunity. Okay. Um, so it's another of the thousand reasons to go back. Um, I, I think the opportunity to see it from there would just be amazing.